resonated with me because it sometimes it sometimes does feel that way. That there's darkness coming into the world and being cultivated in an organized way. And so, of course, we immediately wonder, well, what can I do about that? It feels overwhelming, it feels too big. And I'm not a particularly optimistic person, but I understand the power of metta and the power of presence, simple presence, being aware, cultivating the wholesome. There's a lot of power in that that we're, I think, too quick to dismiss. And uh, the person in the podcast was asked, well, what to do about that? And that was his answer. It's like, well, just little pods of light and love. And we start where we are. And they were coming from a Christian perspective, but that's exactly um, what meta practice is when we all do that, each of us, in our own way. And what I wanted to say a few words, I want to leave more time for questions and discussion, but I wanted to just drop this in to the collective um, flow today. Because in the texts, the Buddhist texts and the commentaries, metta is described in three ways. There's metta in thought, Manokama metta in Pali, and that's meditation. That's cultivating metta as we do in the practice. But that's only a third of metta practice. There's metta in speech, kind speech. And as all of you know, speech as a practice is a huge aspect of our, our general lives and a very challenging one. So to infuse a speech with kindness and bring it into our lives as a practice that we can develop and a skill we can strengthen. And then thirdly, there's metta in action, action in the world, whatever action in the world is appropriate and useful, right in your face. And it could be something quite simple. It was when I was staying with you, Candle. I was walking down the street somewhere downtown. I think it was that day I took the bus home from downtown. And, you know, downtown Portland. I was just walking down the street. And I walked, I was walking, you know, in the opposite direction of the traffic. And I was walking past a bus stop. And the bus had just stopped there and people had gotten off and had gotten on. The bus was about to take off. I caught the driver's eye just by total chance and I smiled. It was just a natural reaction. And I just felt this just tenderness. What a job, you know, to drive a bus all day. It was so interesting. He just beamed back. I, I got the sense that he was quite surprised, actually, that I'd smiled at him. I can't imagine that was very unusual, but it was like, it was this immediacy of connection. That's meant in action. It doesn't have to be a big thing. You don't have to, you know, save the world. Just smile at the bus driver. Be patient in traffic with people who are being idiots. You know? Um, so metta in thought, cultivating metta on our cushions is really the training ground for the other two. And those other two show us, <laughs> show us where we have work to do because some, sometimes we're the idiots. That's just the way it can be.
often in traffic, you know, we just, we react. Or in difficult situations, we react. We're human beings. And this is not separate from our Vipassana practice, as you know, because it takes presence, it takes awareness to do all of that. It's a change of focus is all, whether we focus on presence or we focus on kindness. Both of them are hopefully happening at the same time. So you can zoom in and out. Be present in your life. Or maybe if you're in a situation or you're going into a situation where you will be encountering others, it might be worth zooming more towards the metta side, having that attitude of metta in the foreground. So that no matter what we meet, that's what meets <laughs> what comes at us. Said like this, it sounds so simple. And it actually is, it's very simple. Cultivate the wholesome, refrain from the unwholesome, purify the mind. This was the Buddha's instruction to us. And both presence and metta, vipassana and metta, are the means to do that. But of course, <laughs> it's not easy. And this is where metta in mind, metta in speech are incredibly important. Because can we have metta for ourselves when we can't have metta for anyone else? When we, can we have metta for ourselves when we just hate the state of the world and are dwelling in a place of anger, or irritation, despair, hopelessness, just depression, whatever it is. Can we have metta for ourselves when we make a mistake? When we're caught in greed, aversion, delusion? Having metta for ourselves and each other mm. It just means we're tender towards ourselves, understanding that we're human beings. And we wanna be happy, wishing ourselves well. It doesn't mean we have to love ourselves. <laughs> I wanna be really clear about that. This gets confused. People say, I don't love myself. I can't have method for myself. Well, they're not the same thing. Sometimes if the metta is really strong, it can feel like falling in love with yourself in a really wholesome, beautiful way, acceptance and, you know, but often it's just like, ah, oh, may I be at ease with myself right now? May I be at ease with life right now? And breathing that in, that wish, Understanding that it's, it's actually not always possible to be at ease with ourselves and each other. But when we can acknowledge that we're not at ease and rest kindly in that state, that's half the, half the work done, more than half the work done. And often what happens in that moment, it's like, oh, and then it all just dissolves. All that resistance, all that judgment, all that greed, hatred, delusion, whatever happens to have been arising. And there's just the tenderness and presence left. I sometimes think of metta, and this is all three kinds, metta indeed, speech, thought.
as simple acceptance and well-wishing, no matter what. Simple acceptance and well-wishing anyway. <laughs> I so love, you know, and a, a number of you have heard me say this because I say it all the time. May I be at ease anyway. And this acknowledges that, yeah, I'm not at ease, but I can, I can wish that for myself tenderly in a friendly way. Without an agenda, not needing to force anything. But simply the response of the heart is like, oh, just as we would any other friend. It's like, oh, I'm so sorry you feel that way. I'm so sorry this is happening to you. Maybe it is. And then coming back to that again and again and again. This is why metta in thought, cultivating metta in our practice is so useful because it builds a habit of doing that. So that in life, when we're busy and active and engaged, it can surprise us in the most interesting times. When somebody says something that you know, is difficult to hear, or somebody does something stupid in traffic or whatever. We read the newspaper and go, Ugh. We cultivate this habit. That's the simple part. It doesn't matter if you feel anything when you're doing it. it doesn't mean you have to be successful in sitting and you know radiating metta 100% of the time. Just that repeated inclination is enough to create habit. And the habit has its own momentum. That's the power of this. And that has nothing to do with us personally. So cultivating that's indeed speech and thought, cultivating the presence of awareness at the same time, making these our baseline kind of habits, hardwired. This takes a little time, but you might be surprised how little time it can take to begin for the meta to build momentum. So I think that's all I want to say by way of encouragement. I really more wanted to hear your reflections and maybe some questions. Because I'm sitting here where I am. Uh, and wondering, how do you relate to Meta? What works for you? What doesn't work for you? What questions do you have? So please, anybody who would like to ask, I will try to answer. Um, you can raise your virtual hand or I think there's enough of us I can see that if you want to just unmute your mic or if you want to type something in the chat box, I'll pay attention to it there. Thank you so much. And please don't be shy. You can't ask a stupid question or say something stupid. <laughs> it's very true. Sherry, please. Hi. Sister, thank you so, so much uh, for being with us. It's interesting because now Candle may very well have known ahead of time. Um, but one of the things that we've been studying is meta. Of course, all along, I think we've been studying meta, but we talked a little bit 
a couple of weeks ago around being able um, that meta may not be defined necessarily as quotes. It's it's a little more American that way, loving kindness, but meta could be kind of some other forms. And I know it's so difficult sometimes to put words on what this is. So I just, I don't know how much of an actual question mark there is behind that, but I thought I'd kind of feed that in your direction and see what your thoughts were on that. Mm. Thank, thank you. Thank you. No, that's a really good question and a good reflection because language matters. What we call mm. something matters. And it affects our perception of whatever that is, whatever we're trying to refer to. There are lots of possibilities, translation possibilities for the word metta. Of course, loving kindness, as you mentioned, is the most common in English, American English anyway. And for me, it doesn't capture it. Unfortunately, English is not a language that has a lot of words <laughs> for mind states. So it misses the subtlety of what this is. Well, wishing captures it a little better. Because metta is the wish for the welfare and benefit of a living being, yourself or others. Benevolence sort of captures it. I tend, I find myself not translating it because none of the, all of those are correct in their own way. Because metta is that whole spectrum, loving kindness, friendliness, benevolence, well-wishing. Yeah. It's all of the above. So if you've been struggling to, to kind of wrap English words around this, there, there's a good reason for that. Yeah. <laughs> because you can't. I think... Um, I it's also something so felt in the heart and in, in our gut. It's like, you know it when you're there. Right. You know it when you feel it. You know it when someone smiles back at you or, or when you're exuding it for yourself and kind of giving, I think give, giving that, that just that little gentle nudge of it's okay. You're, we're going to be all right, and you're going to be all right. And yes, hard to put words on it for sure. It's I think can I was discussing with Candle about um, many many years ago. I heard, and I think this is what you're saying. Tell me if I'm I'm not quite going down the right path here. But that in uh, Eskimo, there's 26 words for snow. Because that's yeah. what they live, right? That's a, we have one word for snow. Maybe we have a couple of words for snow, especially perhaps those that live in you know Minneapolis, right? Um, <laughs> right. Not in Northern California where I live, um, but there's that. It's how deep can you go? You know, there's there's the these these levels of communication that can happen with words and with feelings and with what's um, as far as as the definition of snow, all those things, it actually is like it's survival for them. Right. You know, if, if you don't tell somebody what kind of snow is out there, uh, perhaps they're going <laughs> to go out and stay two hours and they should not, you know, right. uh, because it's right. so, so I, I I get that sense that that's what you're saying, and I may be 
you know, but yeah, 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 that's lovely. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Sherry. No, that's a really good reflection. Terry, and it's survival for us too. Yeah, sorry, yeah. Candle. Oh, I Terry had her hand up. I was just acknowledging. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, I've been um, kind of off and on in meditation and all that the years. And so I've been kind of trying to get into it. And one of the readings, and I've read through the different groups, different books and everything, but I really like Thich Nhat Hanh because of his simplicity. He makes right. it simple. <clears throat> so I have a question. I've been kind of because I've been listening to people who've been doing it for 20 years and all, all that and every, for decades. D question to you. Do you think people over, we overthink it and over us, uh, <laughs> overcomplicate everything? Like what you're, what you're talking about. I mean, I, I respect you completely. So please don't get me wrong, but I have to find myself thinking, Tear, you're making it more complicated. It's, down to basics. Do you think that people, we create more anguish and suffering in ourselves when trying to overthink everything to get even the concepts of meta or Buddhism? Do you? My chuckle in by way of response <laughs> is the basic answer and it was quite spontaneous. <laughs> we, we're we're thinking beings we're intelligent beings humans humans and we think we we think very well <laughs> we know how to do that and so we try to think our way to happiness and try to figure it out when we're not yeah yeah i i totally agree with you i think it's very very simple and the the fact that we're addicted to thinking is what makes it difficult. <clears throat> but no, just create a habit of metta, create a habit of presence, and let that carry you all the way to freedom. It's not complicated. Yeah. Yeah, I think that I'm recently get, having a different relationship with my siblings. The way we grew up, we're all independent, <laughs> which is good. However, we're not a leader to beaver family, but but we still talk. We talk to each other, so it's, it's really good. So what I'm discovering, I had just re had a recent uh, weekend with my sister, which was a rarity, it was, and it was wonderful. And then I just was my reflection was terror all your assumptions and all this suffering you thought you were terrible was in your head was not true because i oh you know and so i was like shoot all that wasted energy and time but but i still have this <laughs> moment you know i'm happy to have this moment that time with her and to look forward right. to even now and anyway i just want thank you for your answer because i was thinking just making it too complicated just take a breath and step back and sit you know and breathe you know and, it, and your 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 intuition will <clears throat> somehow listen to yourself and you're okay in a way yeah it's not that simple but it is simple <laughs> thank you uh, where your intuition will take you depends on what habits you've cultivated intuition right. can take you to a dark place as well as a, a light place so but creating the habits, just, yeah, just step back and let that carry you. I'm finding myself thinking more of like, well, how, how well is that working out for you? <laughs> a certain habits, you know what I mean? Certain things, I think I'm, I'm all right. I'm dead right, all right. <laughs> I'm right, but it's not serving me well. So perhaps I yeah. ought to, uh, uh, I had to use the word over, uh, try another approach <laughs> if I want to be yeah. happy or you are at peace. <clears throat> right. Cool. Thank you, Terry. Thank you. Maybe one other person before we go into practice. Yes, Mo, please. Hello. I didn't figure out on this zoom how to raise my hand 
Anyway, here I am. Uh, I have a question <laughs> which is specific to something that's come up for me lately, um, especially on retreat. Mm -hmm. Is I love doing metta and it's a refuge for me. It's really mm -hmm. a place to go where I feel safe. And right. uh, I mean, things come up unexpectedly sometimes, feelings that are not meant to feelings, but generally it's it's kind of a protective right. place to be. And I wonder sometimes, and I this has been suggested by a teacher, that I don't go there too quickly. In other words, if things coming up are really difficult, I just do metta. And I wonder if you can do too much of it or if mm. you are, you know, diverting your attention from what else is going on anyway. Yeah, that's a really good practice for you as a koan practice. It's like to know for yourself in your own gut. What's your intention to go to the metta? And are you going there too soon? You are the only person that can judge that. But what, I, what I'll say by way of kind of context um, is to say this is a really common thing that we all do. Because in the Vipassana practice, yeah, it can get kind of gnarly, can get really difficult, very challenging. We, it's never helpful to dive into the middle of something if we don't have enough equanimity to kind of be stable in that. And so if there's a sense of like, ooh, that's intense, then far better to back off a little bit and do some metta until there, there's some sense of stability. And then you can just, I call it touch and go. You touch whatever it is and then back off, touch it again, back off, touch it again, back off. Don't dive into the middle of it if it's intense. That's actually very skillful. But what you don't want to cultivate is what you're describing is the immediate reflex. It's like, oh, this is hard. I'm going to go do metta. So your koan is finding that place where it's difficult, but not too difficult. Difficult enough so that you're, you, you want to rest against an edge so as to allow that edge to move further and further out. You don't want to respond to an edge by immediately backing off. That way the mind doesn't get wider, <laughs> so to speak. So being, being having the resilience to touch an edge and to rest there for a while and knowing when you've had enough is part of the art of practice. And the only way to figure out what it looks like, it's like, oh, that's too far. I don't want to go there, is to make mistakes. So you know, having made a mistake, what overwhelm looks like and you, that you don't want to go there. You know in your own experience when it gets to be, when you know the mind gets in this state, that's too much and you have to back off. And the only way you know what that is, is to go over the edge into too much. So that's why metta is really important. Being willing to make mistakes in the practice and you know totally fall apart. And go, oh, I totally lost my equanimity, and you know, ugh. okay. Well, now I know that's too much right now. That's when I need to back off and do metta practice. That edge will change, will move. The more we are able to rest there kindly without immediately removing ourselves from difficulty, 
that's when equanimity is more deeply developed. And then the edge moves. It, it, it starts, you know, we, the mind is a very narrow place and it moves out and out and out and out and out and out. And it's only being able to find where that edge is and follow it that equanimity is developed. If metta is a refuge for that, for you, Mo, trust that. And notice your, if you immediately go there when things get difficult out of either aversion or fear, see what it is just for a couple of minutes to stay there. So when you feel the urge to go do metta, it's like just rest there for a little while just a little while see what happens you may be surprised maybe whatever that difficulty is dissolves or maybe it gets more and more intense if that's the case then go do metta so not jumping to the metta right at the beginning give yourself a chance to explore that new territory or that difficult territory and then if you get the sense that it's going to be really overwhelming, that's when you just say very calmly, it's like, uh, I don't want to go there today. I'm going to go to metta. Understanding that metta is wholesome. Just let that movement from vipassana to metta be conscious rather than reactive. Yeah, really good question. So let's take a five minute break, thereabouts. Um, doing whatever you need to do, water, restroom. I need to plug my computer in. So, and coming back here. Um, five of maybe. Five of, yeah. Okay. I'll ring a bell if people are far away to just come closer. Ah, perfect. Okay. I have to go take the dog out. Yeah.
Okay, we so have welcome back, everybody. Returned. Yes. So we'll do a little bit of meta practice together. And I'll do a little bit of guidance, but I really would like to invite all of you who are used to doing a meta practice in a way that you're comfortable doing if you've done a fair amount of it, feel free to ignore me <laughs> and do, do what suits you best. If it's a practice that's really familiar to you. And what I'm going to do is to just for this time of this practice right now, um, begin with ourselves. This is just to give you some context for what's coming. Begin with ourselves and then radiating metta for everybody here. And then expanding out from there to all beings. Remember that metta is not an experience. It's not um, anything more complicated than simple well-wishing. So whether you use a phrase or you don't use a phrase, it doesn't really matter. Sometimes the phrases feel really dumb. <laughs> I hated meta practice for a long time. If you can connect with friendly well-wishing for yourself and for others without a phrase, don't feel constrained, even though I will guide the meditation in the very traditional way. This is another time I, I would encourage you to ignore me if it doesn't work for you. That said, the phrase is very useful. It's just pointing the heart and the mind in the direction you're going. And that's its use. Similar to noting in the Vipassana practice, which can drive people crazy, but it's just putting the mind gently in that direction. So it can be very useful, especially at first. Virinyani, so shall, shall I ring a bell at a certain time when you want to end? When would that be? Yes, if you could ring about 10 minutes before the ending. Okay, so that's about a 20 minute sit. Right, exactly. Okay, perfect, thank you. Thank you, Candle. So I'm going to invite everybody, all of you, all of us, to just relax. Make yourself really physically comfortable. Resting in the body as much as you can. And taking care of the body at the beginning of the sitting so that it's as comfortable as you can make it given, given age, given what bodies do. And if at any time in the course of the sitting, you feel real strong physical discomfort, I would encourage you to just move. In the metta practice, this is totally fine. So just relax as much as you can. Rest back in this mind and body. Receiving whatever sensations and experiences are arising at the sense doors.
and arriving in this mind, this body right now. With friendly interest, that attitude of kindness. And from that relaxed place of kindness, beginning to cultivate loving kindness for yourself, either using a short, simple phrase or just that direction of the heart without words. And you can use any phrase that is wholesome and appropriate, like, may I be at ease with this mind and body just as they are. Or may I be safe and protected from harm. Or may I be peaceful and at ease. May I be well, happy, and peaceful. Repeatedly inclining the heart in this direction with the repetition of the phrase and connecting with that, with the meaning of those words. Or simply resting back in that wordless, benevolent kindness. If you can connect with it without words. Sometimes it helps to put your hand on your chest, to really feel into this part of the body, the heart. And sometimes the only metaphrase you need is, ah. Oh. Repeating this inclination, repeating the phrase, and as best as you can, just knowing what you're saying, very simply. And now 
taking a moment to connect however it's easiest for you with all of us here right now. It might be by just opening your eyes for a moment and seeing all the little squares on your screen. It might just be with a felt sense. And understanding that just as I want to be happy, so do all of you, so do all of us here. And using our direct experience of our own desire for happiness as the bridge to well wishing for others. Just as I want to be happy, so may you be happy. Inclining to appreciation for the mutual support of the practice the fellowship in the Dharma, which is so precious. And whatever you know about each other of goodness, this helps connect with the well-wishing, it flows naturally. So just the fact that we're all here today is profoundly good. The appreciation for that and really feeling into that and letting the metta flow from there. Just as I want to be well, happy and peaceful. So may all of us here be well, happy, peaceful. If you're using a phrase, use the same phrase you used for yourself. And just continuing that repeated inclination again and again and again, moment to moment. Beginning again as many times as you need to. May we all be well, happy and peaceful. Incline the heart and then feel for a moment, the resonance of that. And then again, connecting with each other. All of us here. And the metta with the phrase or that wordless radiation. And once again, feeling the resonance of that. Over and over and over. May we all be peaceful and at ease. May we all be safe and protected from harm. May we all be 
healthy and strong. And now including in this same well-wishing, the families, the dear friends, the work colleagues, the acquaintances of all of us, that infinitude of beings, many of whom we don't know, but each of us with our cloud of dear ones, friends, relations, may we all be well happy and peaceful, human, non-human, our pets, the beings who live around us. May we all be safe and protected from harm. May all of us be peaceful and at ease with the conditions of our lives. Letting that well-wishing go out by itself. There's nothing you need to do. Except rest back in the intention. Again and again and again. And letting that metta go out to our communities, our cities, wherever you happen to be and I happen to be and all of us. Cities or counties, if you live in the countryside. Our communities. Beings known and unknown. Seen or unseen. Liked or not liked. All beings, whatever. Whoever they may be. Wherever they may be in our communities. And may we all also be well, happy, and peaceful. Safe and protected from harm. Letting each of our circles of metta flow out and overlap and intersect each other across the whole country as they move out by themselves. The 
continent, the world. May all beings everywhere, without exception, be well. Safe and protected from harm. May all beings everywhere be peaceful and at ease. Healthy and strong. And just resting back in this universal wallishing in the silence. Continuing to incline the heart moment to moment to moment, however it is easiest for you. To benevolence, friendly acceptance, and well-wishing for all beings everywhere.
sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Thank you, everybody. It's no small thing, this, so it's wonderful. <laughs> and it's a wonderful way to end the day. Some of you, I can tell it's already getting a little dark. For me, a little earlier than the rest of you. And I'd really encourage everybody to explore the Metta Sutta, the, metta, the Buddha's teaching on loving kindness. It's something we often chant on retreats, but that's only one translation of the Pali. Um, one online resource that's been around for quite some time, actually, it's not recent, um, is the Berry Center for Buddhist Studies has in one of their newsletters quite a long time ago when Andy Olensky was still there. He did a whole series on the Brahma Viharas. And I totally, totally love Andy's translation of the Metta Sutta. It's my favorite, I think. Um, so take that and reflect on it. What don't you like? What do you like? What don't you understand? And just keep looking at it. Keep reflecting about it because it's a short teaching. It's not very long. And the Buddha being the Buddha, you know, he didn't go blah, blah, blah. He meant for it to be the way it is. And there's a reason for that. And I found that very supportive in the practice to keep going there and keep, keep re- connecting with that teaching because it really supports the vipassana practice and it supports our lives metta in deed metta in speech metta in thought and i wanted to end with a, a chant candle do you have anything more you need to relay before we start chanting uh i do want to talk a little bit about donna when would you like me to do that before the chanting not after yeah. Okay. We can all go out on the chanting, kind of float away. <laughs> okay. All right. I just wanted to mention, I, I think pretty much everyone here understands that Donna is a word from the ancient Pali language of the Buddha's time, and it's translated as the act of giving, and it refers to the practice of generosity, and that the Buddha taught generally as a vital spiritual quality to cultivate and as one of the foundational spiritual practices. And so in our modern Western Buddhism, the word dana is also used to refer to the practice of generosity that provides the financial and material support that sustains dhamma teachers and centers. And um, I just wanted to mention that um, we have our own dana bowl for our Sunday Insight and in Metta which I'll post in the chat. And then I also want to let everybody have the opportunity to uh, give Donna directly uh, to Aya Virignani, and that can happen through a PayPal account that I have, and then I can make sure that she gets it. And, uh, or it can also be sent as a check in the mail. And so I'm going to put over here, um, in the chat, mm -hmm. if I can get to it, let's see how well I can share all this. So I'm going to start with, I'm going to do these one at a time in case it gets truncated. So, and I just want to acknowledge uh, with great gratitude uh, the generosity of everyone actually coming here today and you know, doing yeah. this for yourselves. Yeah. And that right there is a phenomenal uh, generosity. It really is. 
And I, I sent a picture there in the chat. So if you open up that picture, it'll be a QRL of my uh, PayPal account. Or you just use my um, candle Maui at gmail.com to go into PayPal and find me there. And then, uh, oh, I guess I did that twice by accident. Uh, then let me put in my um, address. Because there are those who do not like digital payments. And I'm really grateful for all of those who were so generous the last time that you came. And yeah. so that's very precious. And uh, someone gave directly to go to Saido Uindica, and I think you have a way to do that. So I, yeah. don't know if, I don't know if you want to say any about Meta in Action or, you know, any of your, your history of how, who you support or how you feel supported. I'll just let you do what you want to yeah. do around that before we close out. Mm. Yeah, as many of you know, I I am part of a group of people that I'm a, one of the two founding members of a group we call ourselves Meta in Action. Amongst them are Carol Wilson, Orion Liebenson, Greg Scharf, Myself, Aria Bauman in Switzerland, and a friend of ours, Mario Osterhoff in Ireland and Holland. And all of us teach the Dhamma, and all of us have deep practice roots in Burma. And from the place of real appreciation for that, what we have been given endlessly when we go to Burma um, is this natural desire to give back. So since 2008, we have been distributing donations to now we have many, many nunneries, monastic schools, monasteries, students, healthcare. I mean, we've given, I haven't actually added up how much it's been in total over the years, but just in the last year we've given away, I have given away because I was there in Burma to do it about $70,000 mm. to various people fantastic and now more than ever it's needed we're not sure how we'll get it there this time since i'm i've left in april i left myanmar but we hope very soon to be able to go back in and continue that if you are interested in meta in action we have a not very active um web page so just Google Meta in Action and it should, should get you there. But it's something I don't curate very, very much. Um, anything you, anything, so much of what we do is, you know, somebody offers $20 or 20 euros or a hundred or 50 or five sometimes, you know, just what you can and it really 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 adds up it's just so phenomenal um this has taught me more than anything the power of metta because it doesn't take much but just all all the many people who are interested in in offering generosity for that and it so adds up so quickly and it's just like the metta practice we offer our phrases all of us together it adds up so, okay. um, and i wanted to close with a with a chant of well wishing i this think is I actually a chant it. that that in, includes all four brahma viharas metta karuna mudita upeka it might be seen on the screen right now. I, yep. It's my whole photo there library, is. so it's not any bigger than that. So, Although that's I might, just fine. I might. Nope, that doesn't work. Oh, nope. Here we go. go. I can scroll. 
There we go. That's a little better on our sorry eyesight. <laughs> and this is from the Thai forest tradition. This is a chant of a poly, a poly chant, an English translation of a poly chant. The arrow's up, it's a three-tone chant. So the arrow, if there's nothing, no marker, it's just the home tone. If there's an arrow going down below the word, it, you go down. If it goes up, you go up. And if everybody could make sure your microphone is off when you are chanting, except me, other, that way we'll have harmony. If you know this chant, feel free to chant along. If you don't know this chant, just let the beautiful words kind of flow through and really connect with that profound wish for the welfare and benefit of all beings. May I abide in well being, in freedom from affliction. In freedom from hostility, in freedom from ill will, in freedom from anxiety, and may I maintain well-being in myself. May everyone abide in well-being, in freedom from hostility, in freedom from ill will, in freedom from anxiety, and may they maintain well-being in themselves. May all beings be released from all suffering, and may they not be parted from the good fortune they have attained. When they act upon intention, all beings are the owners of their action and inherit its results. Their future is born from such action, companion to such action, and its results will be their home. All actions with intention, be they skillful or harmful, of such acts, they will be the Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Thank you so much for everyone who has come. It's been so wonderful to have you here. I'm so happy Thank you're you, close enough time <laughs> zone that I can invite you and that you can have the time to come. I'm really it's so my happy. retreat time, so it's a wonderful opportunity for me also to connect with you. Mm -hmm. I really appreciate your practice your sincerity, mm -hmm. the beauty of that. Mm -hmm. Please let that in. <laughs> it's yeah. no small thing. Yeah. Really isn't. Yeah. And, and thank you, uh, we have the thrill of having you again in two weeks. Yeah. No, I know I'm not sure how long you're going to be staying in Hawaii and how far away you're headed next. But um I hope we can continue with this on some sort of an occasional regularity. <laughs> I would love it. Yeah, me too. Anyone have last Thank minute? Thank you, everybody. Anyone have last minute? Uh, may all beings be happy, something Thank they want you. to say. <laughs> about How about may all beings be happy and candle? Do we have 6.30 to 8.30 tomorrow? Oh, yes, we do. Tomorrow, this is like a full weekend of, of candle. I did a half day yesterday. We did this tonight. And tomorrow evening is this the once a month, second Monday of the month. So, oh boy. And then, and then the next week is our women's circle. And then the next week we come back with Metta and uh, Vipassana. Wonderful. So, Thanks again. Well, it's so great to see everybody. Catherine, Tim, thanks for coming in. Michelle and Sam Warrior Platypus, thank you for joining us. I love your icon there in your picture. Isn't that yes. gorgeous? 
big hearts to you too. I've been admiring it all, all afternoon. I know it's beautiful. I'd like a copy of it. And Eloan, thank you so much for coming. Great to see you, Trina. And maybe Josh yes. was in with us for a moment or two. Good, good. So happy to have you here. Thank you, uh, sister, for just such a profound and enlightening uh, talk. It's uh, really wonderful for you to take your time out to be here with us. Thank you for your generosity and uh, and uh, just mm. your thank you for your practice. Your love thank, for the you, thank you, thank you, thank mm -hmm. you. Thank you so much. Great to see you all. Nice to see you too, Mo. And then there's Tuesdays at three o'clock. It's all this. It's all my same link. <laughs> if you have this link, you know where I am. <laughs> this is the magic link. Huh? <laughs> and if you can remember givenfreely.com, that's my website. So if you forgot the magic link, you can go to givenfreely.com and there are several places to click on the link along with the schedule. So great to see all. And we have a we have a movie coming up on Saturday at Portland Insight Meditation Center, which is going to be fantastic. It's Mission Joy with Desmond Tutu and um, the Dalai oh, Lama, and they they wrote that bad. book. And then there was a fantastic documentary, and then there's a whole web of things around that. That's um, the Joy Challenge, and they try to reach adults and teenagers and. You know, you do this seven-day challenge every day. They send you something. It's only seven days. And uh, anyway, we're going to show it live and in person at PIMC next Saturday, one of our few other than Sunday sittings, that there will be a live event, including popcorn. <laughs> hey, man. <laughs> Joy. Yep. Joy. No, if if I would I would really encourage everybody to go because that is just the most heartwarming, wonderful interaction. Yeah, Those and it's two. got all this neuroscience in it, and then they've got all this stuff backed up on their thing called the uh, the uh, I don't know how they mixed in neuro and science in with mission and joy, but the, you know there's a few umbrellas of organizations that are all mixed in with Mission Joy that's, you know, a worldwide project, but it's out of Berkeley that the neuroscience is. So hope to see some Scientists of you. Scientists know how to be joyful. <laughs> <laughs> it is possible. <laughs> Would you like to stay on to talk a little bit, Virinyani? Yeah, let's do that, Candle. Okay, I'll let the rest of you Night, wave goodbye. Bye. Good night, good night. Thank you so much, Tim. Yay. The next time we're going to have a song from him. <laughs> oh, man. Fantastic. He went fast. <laughs> oh, you're there. Save a song for us the next time, Tim. Sure. Anytime. Just ask. Good. <laughs> Oh, let's stop the recording. That's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs>